Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about bioremediation. So let's get started. So previously we have discussed about the in C2 bioremediation model and we talked about some of its steps and this was the last slide where we left. So we'll start off from here. We have talked about biostimulation and bioaugmentation. So for today, we are going to move to the next slide, which is the advantages of in C2 and the disadvantages of in C2. So we have discussed the number of processes that are involved in in situ bioremediation. So let's just discuss about its advantages and disadvantages. So in under advantages, it is definitely cost effective. It has minimal exposure to public. It has sites of bioremediation which remain minimally uh, disrupted. It has some of the disadvantages here are it is time consuming. and uh, The sites are directly exposed to environmental factors such as temperature, oxygen or uh, oxygen supply and microbial degrading ability varies seasonally. So definitely the, the according to the season, the amount of moisture differs and thus the microbial degrading activity changes according to seasons. So, the, so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages uh, for in situ bioremediation based on location. So moving on from there, so we'll start off with ex situ bioremediation in this. So talking about the XC2 bioremediation, so in this the waste or toxic material can be collected from the polluted sites and the bioremediation with the requisite microorganisms can be carried out at designed places. So basically in XC2 what happens is or the only difference is it, uh, the bioremediation does not take place at the site of contamination whereas the in this the particular contaminant or uh, contaminated particle is picked and taken to some other place for its treatment. So mainly these are uh, treated in bioreactors and big so, uh, different sort of bioreactors in which you are going to study in the coming slides. So as you can see in this uh, diagram as you can see, so this is the contaminated sile or leaking drums or whatever contaminating materials are there which are picked with the help of these vehicles as you can see and this contaminated soil is ex uh, excavated in treated in number of ways. So it can be treated in different ways such as luddy based bioremediation method. In this the mixed contaminated soil with the H2O, water and oxygen fertilizers to stimulate microbial degradation to pollutants, degradation of pollutants. So now one of the methods to treat these contaminants can be sludgy based bioremediation under XC2 model. Uh, some of the methods can be solid base, uh, solid phase bioremediation, which includes composting, land farming, or biopile. All right. So in composting, as you can see, soil and here or other bulking agents are mixed together for their degradation. And in land farming, as you can see, the top layer is filled with the contaminants or soil. And underneath, we have all of the filter and fluid that helps in degrading. And then we have the biopile. And this, the chemical vapors are poured in with the contaminating soil so that the degradation gets faster. So we'll just talk about all of that in detail. So moving there. So the XC2 bioremediation. So the first one of the methods uh, XC2 bioremediation can be carried out is the slurry phase or bioreactors. So these are reactors used for treatment of contaminated soil and water pumped from contaminated soil as uh, contaminated site. And these engineered contaminant system to process pollutants. Also the control of parameters such as temperature, oxygen, pH, water, microbe, mixing and soil with contaminants are taken place. Also best for bioremediation of pesticides, petroleum, hydrocarbon, PCBs and woods are there. Also it has low shear, uh, low shear airlift reactor and aerated lagoons. Also these, uh, these sort of aerated lagoons reduce the cost of the bioreactors as well. So definitely this is a sort of a bioreactor. This is uh, huge in size in real. So this uh, and this all the contaminants are poured and along with that we provide them the adequate uh, conditions such as pH temperature, water, oxygen so that the microbes can degrade the contaminating materials. All right. So moving on with that. So coming to the second process which is the land farming. All right. So this is the in real picture of the land farming. So in land farming, it's a simple aerobic degradation of organic contaminants from a soil, which is exa uh, excavated and spread over a prepared bed, which is around eight to 12 inch layer. 
So this is a sort of a layer, topmost layer in this. The contaminated soil is uh, spreaded. All right, and this is uh, and this is the contaminated soil is poured and spread throughout the entire area, and it involves periodical plugging, plowing, and mechanical tilling that allows soil mixing and incorporation of moisture and oxygen. Also, impermeable lining on the bottom control runoff and minimize erosion. Also, later crops are planted over it. So definitely, it's a very useful method. Uh, as you can see, at last we can grow crops in it or crops on it as well with the help of contaminated materials. So in this, all of the contaminated materials are spread and these are plowed, plowed uh, periodically and mechanically tilted so that it can receive a good amount of oxygen, water, and all the conditions that are required for degradation of the harmful materials. And after the after some period of time, the soil becomes adequate for cultivation. And thus crops can be grown. So coming to another method of in uh, XC2, which is the composting method. So in composting, it's a technique that involves combining contaminated soil with organic compounds such as agricultural waste, which is which includes tar, bark, wood chips that support the development of a rich microbial population. So this is a very easy process as you can see. So composting is a simple process that involves uh, in this the contaminated soil is mixed with organic compounds which are uh, such as straw bark or wood chips and that support the development of degrading of, of for degradation of contaminating material and thus increasing the fertility of the soil so the another process that we have here is the biopiling so in biopiling it's the hybrid of land farming and composting so it's a technology in which excavated soils are mixed with soil amendments with engineered cells and piled back as aerated composted piles. Also, the aeration and nutrients are provided that promotes growth of aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms. So it's a hybrid of land farming, normal land farming and composting method. So in this, the excavated soil are mixed with the soil amend, uh, amendments with engineered cells. So the excavated soil or the contaminated soil is mixed with the normal soil, normal fertile soil, uh, which has the engineered cells or the cells or the microbes that are helpful in degradation and are piled back as aerated composted piles. So these two these two soils are mixed and thus comp uh, placed in an area composting medium and thus the process goes on. Also these are provided with nutrients that are very essential for degradation and making it good enough. So moving on with that, so we have again the advantages and disadvantages for this process as well which is XC2 biodegradation. So for advantages, we have better controlled and more efficient process and it has shorter time requirement and process can be improved by enrichment with desired microorganisms. Also disadvantages are it's a very costly process and some of the processes are very costly, not all, but uh, and it has sites of pollution which are highly disturbed and there uh, there may be disposal problems after the process is complete. Definitely this might be disposal problems so that counts in as a disadvantage for NC2 biodegradation. It's XC2 biodegradation. So this is a correction here. This is not NC2, this is XC2. So moving on with that. So talking about the xenobiotics. So xenobiotics. So we have in the first video of biodegradation, which I made, we have talked about xenobiotics. Not in general, we did, uh, didn't talk about its definition or something like, but we did mention about xenobiotics and how we extract and how we get and degrade it, all of that. So we'll talk about xenobiotics in detail here. So xenobiotics are unnatural foreign synthetic chemicals such as pesticides, herbicides, and solvents. So xenobiotics also count in as a contaminating material, all right? So and it has potential to pose an environmental and public health hazard. Some of the properties of xenobiotics are it's highly stable. It becomes a recalcitrant or it has the resistance or, or it can resist biodegradation and persist in environment so it's uh, very difficult to break down and it has usually large molecular size and it is lipophilic and transported by lipoproteins in blood so definitely and it, it can penetrate membranes by diffusion so it's definitely uh, some compound has a high molecular size so that it is difficult to break and it can resist biodegradation as well and persist in the environment even after degradation for microbes. So definitely it's a uh, definite threat for human health. 
All right. So moving on with that. So coming to the adverse health hazardous effects such as lung diseases, such as pneumoconiosis, asthma, bronchitis, uh, silicosis, asbestosis, uh, some of the reproductive disorders such as infertility, birth defect, miscarriage, uh, immunotoxicity such as hypersensitivity or autoimmune disease infection and lipoproliferative uh, disorder. Other related diseases such as carbon monoxide poisoning, radiation exposure defects, arsenic poisoning or carcinogenic. So some of the adverse effect on the environmental as a whole such as global warming, acid rain, ozone depletion, loss of biodiversity and economic loss. So definitely is innovating something that is very much uh, harmful for our health even not only for our health but for environmental effects as well. Also being lipophilic it has the tendency to combine with or dissolve in lipids or fats. So moving on from so talking about the recalcitrant xenobiotics. So these are non biodegradable xenobiotic compounds. These are include heavy metals such as uranium, mercury, arsenic, chromium, selenium, lead, and petroleum and carcinogenic polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons such as benzene, toluene, xylene, naphthalene, and pyrene. Also, it has polychlorinated biphenyls or PCB, synthetic polymers, herbicides, and pesticides such as DDT, coal tars, phenols, cyanide in coal tars, coke waste, example halocarbons, TCE or tri uh, trichloroethane, PCE, and perchloroethane. So, these are some of the recalcitrant xenobiotics which are non degradable in nature. So talking about these metal biodegradation. So this metal biodegradation, I've decided to take it in the next video. So let's just keep this video till here. I'll be back another video very soon, continuing from here on. So stay tuned and thank you for watching this video.